Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're going to look at capacitance, which is found as the capacitance topic of AQA A-level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to try and understand what is meant by capacitance. So if we're successful and we learn in today's lesson, you should be able to define capacitance, calculate values of capacitance and know what a capacitor is and how it stores charge, which links into the following part of the AQA A-level physics specification. So capacitors are electrical components which can be used to store electrical charge in a circuit. Now they can come in many different shapes and sizes. So in this picture you can see examples of capacitors found in the real world. So a capacitor can store electric energy when it's connected to its charge and circuit and when it's disconnected from its charge and circuit it can dissipate that stored energy. Now Capacitors can be used like te a temporary battery. Now capacitors are commonly used in electronic devices to maintain a power supply whilst the battery is being charged. So to lost the to prevent the loss of information in volatile memory. So the idea is that a battery and a capacitor, they both store electrical charge, but they're not the same component. A capacitor will store electrical potential energy in the electrical field, whilst a battery will store chemical energy as, a, as in a store as such. Now a capacitor can store relatively little charge and charges quickly and discharges quickly, whilst a battery stores a relatively large amount of charge, but can only charge and discharge slowly. Now, this means that since capacitors can only store small amounts of charge at once but can discharge it very quickly, this makes it very useful in situations where a quick burst of charge is needed. So a use of a capacitor can be in a defibrillator. The capacitor will discharge, leading to an electrical shock. Another use of a capacitor can be in a camera flash. The capacitor will discharge, leading to the flash of a camera. Another use can be in an ignition switch in a vehicle. The capacitor will discharge, leading to the starter circuit of a motor. Another use of a capacitor it will, will be as an emergency backup in electrical devices such as a computer. The capacitor will discharge lead to the electrical circuit not losing complete power if there is a power outage. Now as mentioned before a capacitor can store electrical charge using the electrical field but what is a capacitor? How does it work? How can we quantify a capacitor? So capacitance which is what all capacitors have is the measure of the amount of charge stored in the object per potential difference used to store it. So this definition comes from the idea that an electrical field produced by a potential difference is used to store electrical charge. And we can use this definition to find an equation for capacitance. So capacitance is equal to the charge stored in the capacitor divided by the potential difference across the capacitor. Now, the units of charge are coulombs, the units of potential difference are volts, so therefore our units of capacitance is given as coulombs per volt. Now, another name for this is the farad. So one farad is equal to one coulomb per volt. Now, this is named after Michael Faraday, who was the first to develop capacitors effective enough for practical applications and to measure the effect of the different variables on their capacitance. So this means that the capacitance of one farad is when one coulomb of charge charge is stored due to a potential difference of one volt being applied across the capacitor. Now for example a capacitance of 20 farads will mean that 20 coulombs of charge will be stored for every one volt of potential difference across a capacitor and a capacitance of 40 farads will mean that 40 coulombs of charge will be stored for every one volt of potential difference across a capacitor. Now we assume for a capacitor that the capacitance of that capacitor remains unchanged throughout its use. Now in reality charge will leak in a capacitor capacitor over time and the capacitance will change, but for A level we only consider the minimum capacitance of a capacitor which occurs when the potential difference is at a maximum. Now just remember in this equation the potential difference is the potential difference across the capacitor, not the potential difference of the circuit. Now be mindful of this when answering questions when you have to consider the potential difference of an entire circuit or branch. Now in addition, in this equation the charge used is the charge of the capacitor, however charge can not be created or destroyed. So this charge will also be the charge of the circuit as the capacitor will be charging or discharging through that circuit or you can consider it as the charge of the original energy source. So this means that this charge calculated in this equation can also be used to calculate the current flow of a circuit the capacitor is attached to. 
Now, the farad, which is where we remember we said that a farad is one kilo of charge stored due to a potential difference of one volt being applied across the capacitor, is a very large unit, when you consider that electrons have charges on order of 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So it's more common to see capacitances expressed in terms of microfarads, nanofarads, or even picofarads. Now, interestingly, batteries can store charges on the order of about 6,000 farads. This means that they, this is because that they store their energy energy via the chemical methodology as opposed to using the electrical field. So because that they store the energy via chemical means as opposed to the electrical field, it can store much more energy than the capacitor, but it finds it much harder to convert this energy into other forms compared to the capacitor. So as we discussed earlier, you can see that there's a comparison you can make between a capacitor and a battery. So a capacitor stores potential energy in the electrical field, a battery stores potential energy as a chemical energy store, the capacitor stores relative to be little charge, the battery stores are relatively large amounts of charge, a capacitor can discharge and charge quickly, whilst a battery can charge and discharge slowly. Now just think about this, the capacitors are much more dangerous than batteries as they discharge very quickly, so it deposit a charge into an object in a fraction of a second. So a discharging capacitor can easily kill a human, but a discharging battery is unlikely to do so. Now a capacitor is a device which stores electrical charge, it has a capacitance. Now a capacitor consists of two conducting parallel plates separated by a gap. These parallel plates will produce a uniform electrical field between them and we show this with the circuit symbol for a capacitor. Now when the capacitor is placed across a direct current source charge builds up on its plates. So the plate connected to the negative terminal of the power supply gains electrons. It becomes negatively charged. Now the plate connected to the positive terminal of the power supply loses electrons. This makes it positively charged. So this happens because they're repelled by the negative plate and are attracted to the positive terminal. So you get your negatively charged plate and your positively charged plate. Now remember this will only happen if the current which flows through the capacitor is direct. Now when the capacitor is placed to a, to a direct current source we get our potential difference forming across the plates is such like this. Now this means a charged object would have to do work to move between the plates as there's a potential difference. Now Electrons cannot travel across between the plates because between the plates there is an air gap and an air gap is a poor conductor so it allows that potential difference to form. Now the better the insulator between the plates the greater the charge imbalance that can form between the two plates. So the gap between the plates prevents the electrons from moving between the plates and thus creates your charge imbalance. Now just remember we've got a uniform electrical field between these two plates as they're two parallel plates. Now this effect of producing a potential difference across the plates can be increased if we fill the space between the plates with a material which is a worse conductor than air and we call these types of materials dielectric so remember the dielectric must have must be a worse conductor than air or a vacuum now this means that the capacitor will store the electrical charge because the capacitor can store the charge on its plates which it can discharge later so this effect because it's two parallel plates with a potential difference will produce a uniform field between the parallel plates. Now technically no extra charge is stored in a capacitor when it is charged compared to when it is uncharged. We only state that the capacitor stores electrical charge as when they discharge electrons are released into the circuit. Now when the capacitor is charged the electrons have left the positive plates and the electrons have gone onto the negative plates. So the positively charged plate has lost electrons but the negatively charged plate has gained electrons. So what this means is the number of electrons leaving the positive plate is the same as the number of of electrons gained by the negative plate. This means overall the capacitors when charged don't gain charge, rather they remain electrically neutral. But what it does provide is it provides a movement of charged particles uh, uh, which leads to a potential difference across the plates which then leads to the uniform field between the plates. Now what this means is that when the capacitors store electrical charge, that when they are discharged, the electrons release, they're released into the electrical circuit. So actually, any charged particle in the dielectric medium will experience an electrostatic force because it's, in a, it's a charged object in an electrical field and therefore becomes an electrical potential energy store. So therefore, you can put your energy in your capacitor in those charged 
uh, objects in your dielectric. Now, technically, a capacitor actually stores electrical potential energy produced by the imbalance of charge in its place, it, plates interacting with the medium between the plates. However, this energy is released in the form of moving charge, so it appears to store charge. Rather, it's actually moving charge, which is already present. Now, it could be argued that a negatively charged plate stores charge. However, the overall capacitor itself does not store charge. Now, as we mentioned before, this capacitor will store electrical potential energy in its dielectric or the air in between the two plates. This energy can then be released in the circuit in the form of moving electrons when it is discharged. This process means the energy can be stored in a capacitor uh, can be released extremely quickly compared to a battery. Now, this means that when a capacitor is discharged, the current in the circuit goes up as there's more electrons flowing with greater energy, but the potential difference across the capacitor decreases as there's less electrical potential stored in that dielectric. So, what have we learned in today's lesson? We've learned the definition of the capacitance, of capacitance which is C equals Q over V. So, if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, you should be able to understand what the definition of capacitance is. You should be able to calculate values of capacitance and know what a capacitor is and how it stores charge. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson, look at the idea of capacitance in the capacitance topic for AQAA level physics. Thank you very much and have a lovely day.